Sarah Smith. Well, Anthony Brown from the British Bankers Association is with us now. Anthony Brown, why are banks angry about having this threat that they might be broken up? Isn't it sure, surely, that there is a breach of trust, which you know more about than I do, um, and therefore you can't be trusted as banks, and therefore that sanction has to exist? Well, the banks are fully committed to a whole range of reforms, of which this is one, uh, in order to make sure that never again should the taxpayer uh, bail out the banks. They don't want to be in the position of having a financial crisis like this again or uh, having to rely on taxpayers. In terms of ring fencing, the industry has broadly come out to support it. There's then this question today that the, the Chancellor has come out one, one step ahead and say we'll electrify uh, the ring fence. And it's clearly good politics. We're worried about the economics of it, though, because it creates uncertainty for the banks. For us, city analysts today have said that it will devalue the banks. This makes it more difficult for them to raise money, uh, which they then lend out to small businesses. But you've just talked about certainty. The bank's complete commitment to behave by the rules. Therefore, there is no uncertainty. They're going to behave so well, this sanction will never be used. Well, the, the banks are certainly committed to behaving well. The question, so what's the, wrong the, with the, the sanction? The, the, what is the wrong question, with the sanction? The question is the devil is in the detail. That, that uh, What triggers the actual sanction? This sort of Damocles hanging over the heads. What, what, how will the Bank of uh, England governor decide whether to split a bank in half or not? And the question really is one for the investors in banks, the pension funds and the insurance companies that buy shares in banks. They, they might f suddenly find out that their investment is turned into two and that's what devalues the banks or what the city analysts are worried will devalue the banks. But you know how the Bank of England will be able to tell because they'll be able to tell whether you're gambling with well, customers' money. Well, we don't, we don't actually know the details yet. The government didn't announce that today, and I, I don't but know But as a generalisation, the, the FSA, now the Bank of England, will be able to tell whether you're gambling with the customers' money. They will go in there and say, hang on a minute, what is that money that you're using to gamble out there? It, when you get to technical details, it's a lot more complex than that. But um, the, the banks are completely committed to uh, obeying the ring fence and a range of other activities. As we said, this has obviously got the, the headlines here, but there's a whole load of other things. They've got far higher capital ratios. They're far safer from that point of view than they used to have. They've got more money there. Uh, they've all got recovery and resolution plans, which are plans in case they do wobble, that either prop them back up or if they fail, at least they fail in a way where the customers don't lose out and the economy doesn't lose out. Well, and they're, they're implementing all that, working with government to do it. Let's move on then to LIBOR, for which the British Bankers Association had a deep responsibility. Before we come on to that, let's just ask you about the Chancellor's recommendation that the payments from uh, RBS for the fine of 500 uh, million in America will come out of bank bonuses. Brilliant idea, isn't it? I'm afraid I'm going to give a really boring answer here, which I can't talk about an individual member. I can talk about industry-wide policy, but not an individual member. And I have no insight into the, uh, the finding of but there's RBS a principle or any there, other isn't bank. There? I mean, a bank goes off and secures a fine for neo-criminal activity across the Atlantic. Well, we, I, can, I can say this. I can, we completely accept, and the, the banks as a whole completely accept, that when it comes to LIBOR, the taxpayer shouldn't bear any cost oh, of it. you agree any, with any, the Chancellor? Any, any cost uh, the only difference is you don't want to talk about the particular case, but generally speaking, well, the taxpayer the, should not have to pay. They should have to pay, bear the cost of life. Right. OK, well, that's a very important benchmark you've established. Uh, now let's just talk about your responsibility, because it's the BBA, the British Bankers Association, that got us into this mess with LIBOR because you were wayward with its administration. I can't, well, I can't, there's, there's a whole load of things I can't say about LIBOR at the moment in terms of the BBA's operations Great. of it. Because You're we're, under investigation? Uh, we're not under investigation, no. We should be, surely. Uh, who was well, in charge? Well, that's, that's, Who that's was in up, charge of well, administering? I've been, I've been, no, I've been, I I've been the job. I've been, I've been the job four months, and we've. No, uh, no, no, we've no put, but there is a it, fundamental here. Yeah. Who, we, at, who was in charge of the setting BBA, the LIBOR rate? I, I could look it up on the, Google. Anybody, a viewer, can look it up. The uh, BBA. The, uh, the BBA was absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. But we, that's we exactly had a, what I'm we asking. We had a governance. We had a governance process in place. The most important thing now is that we restore credibility to LIBOR. That we actually make sure that it operates again with credibility. Uh, we're working with the Treasury on that. Well, and but with there the, is a with first the, before that. The there's a before that. We, we, an apology, an acceptance of responsibility, and indeed a naming of the guilty parties who were responsible for this utter farrago. The, the people under, who are being investigated are the banks, not us. I mean, no, we, no, but you a, set the, the label. The BBA is a, effectively a polling company that takes the information that's given to the us BBA every day. The BBA is the, is the, the bank. Point is, the point is... You, British you Bankers need, Association. The point, well, we're a trade association that represents the banks. The, the point is that we, what, we work now with the government and with the FSA to restore credibility to LIBOR and find a new operator for LIBOR. And the government has said the BBA shouldn't operate LIBOR. We completely agree with that. The BBA shouldn't operate LIBOR. We're now working with the government. They've set up a tendering right. committee to find a new operator for LIBOR. Anthony Brown, thank you very much indeed for talking with us.